Hello, welcome back. My name's uh, Daniel Gormali. I'm a chess grandmaster currently living in um, Northumberland in northeast of England. And today I want to talk about um, blitz addiction because I think that this is something that is not talked about enough. Now, yesterday I logged on to um, Lee Chess uh, sometime in the afternoon, probably around about one ish under my account called Karobi and I started playing and I played for a few hours um, roughly probably about three or four hours and I just felt like the whole day was kind of wasted when I could have been doing something constructive I just one minute game one minute game one minute game that was effectively it and you're playing against very good players. Um, I think one one of the things I noticed, sort of like 20 years ago, when I used to play, 23 years ago, a lot of us used to play on ICC Internet Chess Club. And um, the probably one in ten, I'm um, sorry, one in three, I would say, of the players were were good players. Were like really, you could tell were really strong players. But now when you play. I would say three out of three almost, or certainly more than two out of three of, of the players are just incredibly strong. So I think the standard has just exploded. But I, there's also this kind of element of mistrust as well, because you feel like they're so good, these players. Obviously, I'm getting paired with good players. I'm 2,700 plus on, on Lee Chess. So I'm a decent player. You know, even by Internet Blitz standards, the other day I played against uh, Vincent Keimer, for example. It was 3,000 plus on Lee Chess. Uh, it was a close game. I lost in the end game. But yeah, you're playing against good players. But it's this element of mistrust. The reason we had this thing about Vladimir Kramnik was going around accusing people of uh, cheating uh, online. I think he's very paranoid now, understandably so, because there is a lot of cheating that goes on. Um, he actually lost a friend of mine, uh, Richard Perp and uh, accused Richard of cheating, even though this was just one game. And Richard played quite accurately in that game, but it was quite a short game. A lot of the ideas were very thematic to that particular opening. Just throw your kingside pawns forward and create some weaknesses. So it's difficult to tell, I really, I think you shouldn't be going around uh, accusing people after one game. Yeah, if, if you lost to them 100 games the same way, you should you could probably make an accusation, but it's people's reputations you're talking about. But yeah, so chess in general is very addictive, but people talk about the cheating issue, but they don't talk about the addiction issue. Um, you know, when I'm sat there online playing against people, it's it's hugely stimulating. Obviously, I love chess. That's kind of what, what my career is. I'm a chess player, professional chess player. Uh, I enjoy chess. Um... But it gets to the point, yeah, when you play online, that you're, you're, you feel like you're kind of drawn back in. So the first few days when I go back on an account, so currently I don't have an active chess.com account. I used to have uh, an account called Sir Gerhard, which I played on, which I may reopen at some point, but I asked them to close the account because it was one point where I just started playing far too much, like every single day. And I was playing for several hours and I just couldn't stop. So I asked them to close my account. So it looks suspicious as well. If you if you if your account gets closed, other people who played against you recently, they probably assume that this guy must be a cheat, right? Because your account got closed. Well, no. So let me just close that because it's silly one. But anyway, yeah. So uh, but on um, Lee Chess, I'm under the name Karobi. Now Karobi was a hurdler in the 1990s and he, he raced against other horses like Mighty Mogul. I believe he won race at Chepstow but then was retired at Aintree maybe, he won a race at Aintree and he was retired but I tend to name a lot of my accounts after famous race horses and um, this Karobi account I've had for several years now, it's not verified, I've not got a GM title reason is because when I asked Lee Chester, they said, you keep closing accounts and we don't like this. This is causing us a lot of hassle. So therefore, we, we can't be bothered to verify your account. Now, I've had that account for several years now. They still won't verify. 
or well, I could ask them again, of course. Um, but yeah, so I play under that account. There's a lot of players I'm playing on there who probably are GMs and IMs themselves who aren't verified. There's also GMs and IMs who are verified. But I have somebody who controls that account for me. So I'll ask them if I have a, like a relapse and play for too long, I'll ask them to stop um, the account uh, to lock me out. You're not really supposed to do that. You're not really supposed to have somebody else controlling your account. But that's the way it works. And um, yeah, so essentially I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm an internet chess addict because when you're playing online, you get often you get like dozens of people watching your games. If I'm playing against someone like Kaima, I might get like over 100 people watching the game. Uh, it's hugely stimulating. You're in a mental battle with somebody else. Um, and when you're like in the house, I'm not talking about when you're outdoors, it's slightly different, but when you're in the house and you've been playing internet chess, there's this kind of feeling that, hang on a minute, this is all I should be doing, really, is, is, is playing, is playing internet chess. Um, is, is, you know, you're watching the TV, uh, you're reading a book, or whatever you might be doing in the house, or sometimes even if I'm on a train journey, and you think this is so boring, I'm so bored compared to playing one minute chess, playing three minute chess, let's get back online. You know, you, you've almost got itchy feet, you know, ants in your pants, that you want to just get back online and start playing again. And, yeah, I think it's designed to be as addictive as possible. The whole way they set up the website, uh, these websites, it's just designed to be very addictive. Um, and chess.com, for example, have made a lot of money out of people's addiction. I'm not saying that's a terrible thing, but... You know, that needs to be bear, uh, uh, bared in mind, basically, that they're making money off people's misery to some extent. Um, I mean, they've probably made like uh, millions of pounds out of chess addicts, essentially. You know, we're all chess addicts. Like, people who, who follow chess tend to have a kind of obsession about the game, you know. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a professional level, amateur level, it tend to be that a lot of people are have that kind of addictive... They want to keep playing chess. So chess.com kind of exploited that. And they've made millions. Some of their like CEOs, like Danny Wrench, have made millions of pounds out of uh, chess addiction. You know, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't know. But that, that is the reality of the situation. And uh, I've made nothing out of my, my chess addiction. You know, I, I don't get paid. If I go online, if I go on a site like Lead Chess or chess.com, I don't get paid. I'm a professional player. There might be dozens of people watching my game. Nobody's paying me to operate on that site. So, you know, I'm not getting anything out of it myself, other than the fact that I'm playing on that site and potentially enjoying that chess game, uh, which obviously I am getting that out of it. Sometimes I've played very nice games online. Sometimes I've had horrible losses where I've screamed with anger. And I've thumped, I, how did I lose to that idiot? You know, there have been so many emotional up and, ups and downs that I've started to think, right, I should stay away from it. Because not only is it addictive, but it's also really drains you emotionally. Because you, you're sitting online and, you, and, and you're playing these people who may be thousands of miles away. And you're getting really, really annoyed. And sometimes they'll get annoyed. I played somebody yesterday, it was a one minute game. And about 30 seconds into the game, they just left the game. Because they were losing. They just literally just left. And I was sat there for 30 seconds with nothing to do but wait for his flag to fall. So clearly other people were getting emotion. And I actually quite enjoyed that in a sadistic way. I quite enjoyed that when, when that happens. Because you can, you can tell that you've like annoyed them. And uh, yeah, so all that emotional ups and downs. And people are basically preying off that. Like chess.com, lead chess. They're preying off that kind of you know addiction. Um, so I'd be interested to know if there's anyone out there who has similar stories about addiction. Maybe I could even interview you for this channel and talk, we'll talk about your experiences with, uh, you know, this kind of mental addiction that, that chess represents, um, or certainly blitz chess. One minute is designed to be as addictive as possible. You know, one minute is so addictive because you, you just go boom, boom, boom. There's no kind of residual um you know kind of 
uh, as I say, residual kind of, what's the word, um, you know, merit to the game. Essentially, you just play that one minute game, that's it. You won't remember it in like several years' time. A lot of people now want to get, people like Magnus Carlsen are saying, look, I want to play quicker and quicker games. I don't want to play classical games I'm sitting there for three, four hours. But let me tell you, uh, classical games are remembered through history. How many people remember rapid play games? How many people, can you, can you name me a famous rapid play game? I can maybe name you four or five. How many people can remember famous, like, old Blitz games? Not really. You know, it's classical chess that has really brought chess to, to the forefront of uh, popular culture. Um, not, not Blitz chess, not rapid play chess. But Blitz chess is hugely addictive. One minute chess is hugely addictive. Nakamura streams online, he might play for like 10, 12 hours a day. Um, I would say he's a kind of a high class chess addict. You know, he's sat there, he's kind of living off his addiction almost. Like he's getting a huge amount of money, probably making several million dollars a year streaming on chess.com and other platforms. And, you know, fair play. But he's obviously some kind of addict, right? Because, you know, and that's why also partly why he's so good. Because he's, he's willing to play for many, many hours a day. He feels that that's what you need to be, to do to be that good. You know, probably if he played for like, if he didn't play for six months, he wouldn't be quite as zoned in. So yeah, I feel like um, chess, it does have that kind of addictive quality to it, you know, and uh, there, there is a danger that, yeah, you can just play for too long. So again, yeah, if anyone is watching this, I I, I, I implore you, I implore you, please, to re leave your comments below about your uh, mental one-minute addiction because I'm intrigued to know if anyone's got any similar stories to mine because I'm totally, like, I'm in rehab now. I'm in rehab. I want to get back online. I've got itchy fingers. I want to get back online and get that mental battle going. One minute, you know, click. Boom. One of the things you know is actually when you um, don't play for several years, the really funny thing is you come back online and the same people that you were playing, like even like, you know, 11 years ago or something crazy, are still there playing all day, every day. There's one guy who played, I think, 500,000 games on Lee Chess, absolutely insane, and not even a particularly strong player. And yeah, you think, like, what are you doing? You're wasting a huge proportion of your life doing something that's completely and utterly pointless. I feel like long play chess classical chess gives you kind of like a satisfaction that you don't really get from blitz chess um but you can't yeah there is some don't get me wrong there are some upsides to blitz chess as well you know i've had like some great moments playing blitz chess online and stuff but it's kind of a little bit soulless so anyway that's my story about um online blitz i hope you enjoyed it and uh probably be talking more about that in the future